Adiara Traore was due to travel to France with an international dance troupe before French, uh, the Fra France suspended visa services in Mali and the French Ministry of Culture as the country's artistic union to suspend cooperation with artists from Mali, Burkina Faso and Niger amid tensions between France and the Sahelian juntas, Malian artists and their supporters are asking Paris to allow artists to continue the cultural exchange that has flourished between Mali and France for years. Annie Reisenberg reports. Every year since 2014, Adiara Traore has toured France with her dance group Amala Gianor. She was due to visit the country earlier this month when her visa appointment was abruptly cancelled after France suspended visa services in Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger, following the coup that toppled Niger's president in late July. France's Ministry of Culture also issued a directive to halt cooperation with artists from these countries, which the minister herself later retracted, saying that artists with valid visas are still able to participate in existing partnerships. But artist visas issued to Africans are usually only valid for a matter of months, and artists must apply for new visas for each tour. Like many artists and musicians from Mali who tour internationally, a large portion of Traoré's income is from these tours. She says, imagine, you had a tour planned and you didn't go, and you made plans with the money that you would receive on the tour. You thought, oh, I will do this and that, and now, she says, you don't have any money. As for me, it's been two months that I haven't paid my rent. France has an ongoing diplomatic falling out with Mali's military government, resulting in the expulsion of the French ambassador and the withdrawal of French troops from Mali last year. A group of European citizens living in Mali has called on the French government to lift the visa sanctions. Nicolas Bouchot is one of the spokespersons for the Citizen Collective for Europe-Mali Fraternity. The group, which coordinates largely on Facebook and WhatsApp alongside their counterparts in Burkina Faso and Niger, addressed the government in an open letter. Bouchot spoke to VOA from his home in Bamako. Uh, what we want, he says, is for the French government to use the diplomatic or political tools they have at their disposal and not to use the Malian population to be able to achieve their objectives. Alassane Samake is the drummer in the Bamako-based musical group Sahel Roots, which gained notoriety after winning a music competition in Burkina Faso and touring in France last year. He says international tours are a way for his group to show the world the traditional music of the Sahel. Echoing the European Collective's open letter, Samake says music and culture is something that brings people together and that the links between the countries should not be severed. He says, politics is the interest of a few, which should not be mixed with art. Art is universal, okay? He says, let us do our art and handle your political problems separately. That's all. Tensions between France and the Sahelian Hintas continue to rise, with French troops this month withdrawing from Niger, which had become the base for French troops in the region. Today, Tuesday, at the invitation of President William Ruto, this will be the monarch's first visit to a Commonwealth nation as king. It was in Kenya that King Charles's late mother, Queen Elizabeth II, acceded to the throne in 1952. Officials said the visit will celebrate the warm relationship between the two countries. However, it comes as some Kenyans are demanding an apology and reparations for ill treatment during British colonial rule. Weda Ambrose is a Kenyan lawyer and political analyst. He tells me that King Charles will receive a warm welcome because there is more positive in the relationship between the two countries than negative. Being members of the Commonwealth, having uh, been um, part of the British, so we feel a privilege that he's coming to visit this country, the first country in Africa. It gives us uh, prominence in the globe and uh, it boosts our tourism and uh, many other things. So he's highly welcome. But Kenya was uh, once colonized uh, by Britain, and uh, are you saying that everything is fine? There's nowhere in the world where everything is fine. We are talking about currently Kenya was colonized by British. The bad things they did, the good things they did, and uh, now we are engaged in nation building. We want to build our country to be a first world. So we concentrate more on the opportunities we can uh, capitalize on to build the country, as opposed to uh, going into the nitty-gritty of some of the details that are part of colonialism. Well, it was in Kenya that the king's mother, Queen Elizabeth, who passed away now, she learned that she became a uh, queen. Yes, the, she was here when uh, her father died and she became queen. 
She was young. She was on holiday in Nanyuki, in one of the places, tourist uh, attractions. And uh, therefore, we have a long checkered history with the royal family, other than uh, happening on uh, the colonialism part. Kenya and uh, Britain has had very good relations, very unique history together, and some uh, occurrences that increases the uni- uniqueness. So we are looking at it and we're saying, let's move forward. And uh, Kenya has been special in the list of the British uh, hegemony. I can say that I remember in 2007, we had uh, political turmoil, and uh, our friends, the British and uh, the USA, came in very quickly and we were able to nip in the bud what would have brought the country to ungovernable chaotic situation. So uh, it's a special friendship that to me I'm seeing. What do you say to some Kenyans who would say, well, the British did some wrong to the Kenyans? For example, during the independence uh, struggle, uh, the Mau Mau movement, and there are some who are demanding perhaps there should be some reparations. Yes, colonialism had its own uh, issues and uh, very many bad things took place. And uh, whatever um, some people are asking for, they have a justification for it, they have a basis to follow it up, and we have no problem with that. We are only saying also in the history as a country, we also have uh, decorum in welcoming a guest. So they'll put their demands, they'll put what they think is there, but the welcome will be very cordial and very nice. So those demands, those issues... They'll not be the first on the table. The first on the table will be current events, current issues, our vision for the country. Where we- the International Organization for Migration said on Monday that the number of displaced people in the Democratic Republic of Congo has reached a record high of 6.9 million. The latest increase comes following renewed conflict between Tutsi-led M23 rebels and militias royal to the government in the eastern province of North Kivu in October. It is said it was intensifying its efforts to address the complex and persistent crisis across the country with most of those who fled their homes, desperately needing help to meet their basic needs. As the security situation continues to deteriorate, movements become more frequent and humanitarian cry needs soar. Nearly 200,000 people have fled their homes since the resumption of the fighting in the Ruchuru and Masisi regions north of Goma, according to the UN humanitarian agency OCHA. The IOM said it urgently needs to deliver help to those most in need, describing the situation in DRC as one of the largest internal displacement and humanitarian crises in the world. For decades, the Congolese people have been weathering successive storms of crisis, said Fabien Sambusi, head of the IOM mission in the country. More than two-thirds of the displaced people in the DRC live with host families. The organization said that on top of the Large-scale humanitarian crisis in the East, other regions have experienced conflict, insecurity, and dis- disasters such as floods and landslides. It is helping to manage. It is helping to manage 78 camps housing some 280,000 displaced people and is strengthening mental health services for people in psychological distress. The IAM is calling for additional financial resources for its operations in the DRC, saying it has received less than half of the US dollar 100 million requested. The eastern part of the DRC has been plagued by violence from local and foreign armed groups for nearly 30 years. Present in the country since 1999, the UN peacekeeping mission MONUSCO is one of the largest and most expensive of its kind in the world, with an annual budget of $1 billion. But it's highly unpopular with the DRC government calling for it to leave by December, saying it has failed to put an end to the violence perpetrated by armed groups.